SmackDown on Fox, 1.83 million viewers. Last week, the show did very poorly, and uh, it had some strong competition. I think it was going up against the NBA. I forget exactly what it was going up against, but it did terrible. And uh, I figured this week... I thought it would do better, but it barely did. And granted, we'll get the uh, final numbers here. Uh, final numbers last week, 1.917 million viewers, which is still pretty terrible. Overnight, 0.5, up 25% from last week's overnight. Uh, but of course, that's rounded up. So it could be up 0.1 if it was 0.44 to 0.45. So I guess we'll know more pretty soon. But uh, first time since last August. The overnight viewership fell below 1.9 million. Now it has done so two weeks in a row. So I thought SmackDown was overall a strong show. I thought this was the fourth straight week in a row that it had a relatively strong show. With that said, the show is not perfect. The finishes are atrocious. I know Dave wrote it off last night as, oh, well, it's TV. Yeah, it is TV. I'm not going to watch a show if these finishes are this horrible. These were horrible finishes. But overall, I thought the show was good and the main event was great. Any SmackDown thoughts, Mike? Well, you have to watch this show at your job. Yeah, I do. So regardless of what happens I do with have finishes, to watch you're this. going to have to watch it. So you have to settle in and be ready for that. And unfortunately... Yes, but I don't have to accept this it, This is Mike. too often the time. Unfortunately, this is too often the case with WWE where... And we talk about it a lot during the pay-per-views where... Boy, you know the match is going to be good because the people inside are really talented and they're going to work really hard, but you worry about the finish, you know, because it's going to lead to something else and it's going to be probably stupid or wacky. And Dave's right in that they would do this back in the day. You'd have two guys go for 10 minutes before you had somebody jump in there because you wanted to give the illusion uh, that it was a match or you wanted to give some, you know, make it make sense where the heel wants to go out and jump somebody who's already tired. You know, there's there's reasons that you would do that. But the problem is there's so many of these bad finishes. There's so many wacky finishes. There's so many non-finishes that when you do want it to count, or when you do want to do it, and it's not special anymore. You do it so often, and you do it in so many silly and stupid ways where it takes away the effectiveness, and you do get tired of them. And I don't blame you for being tired. Of, I, I'm somewhere in the middle. It, it, you know, it bothered me a little bit more than Dave, but not as much as you. But the bottom line is, when you overdo something to death, and when you beat it to death, like any stipulation, like anything, it's not going to mean anything. There's a law of diminishing returns there that. You know, unfortunately, WWE has their people trained and has their fans trained where, you know, I guess a lot of them do shake this off because they're so conditioned to it, but it doesn't make it good and it doesn't make it effective for them. If they want these things to work, you got to treat things more special. And if you have a run in three times on the show, the fourth time you have one after 28 minutes, yeah, it's probably going to piss somebody off. So we had a Bailey, Nia, and Shayna versus Bianca, Natty, and Tamina match. And yes, uh, Shayna and Nia worked every show when they were the tag team champions, but then they lost the belts, and they're still working every show. They claimed it was because of the, uh, whatever they call it, remember that stupid thing they had, the, the once, in a, once in a quarter special or whatever? What did they call that stupid thing? Their booking crutch? Somebody help me out here. They had some, the, something... Interbrand. You know what I'm talking about? Anybody? Is it that bad that no one remembers the, what this called? The wild card? No, it used to be called the wild card. The brand to brand invitational. Thank you. It only took five minutes for these people to remember. Well, with such a catchy name like that, how would they forget? Yes, the brand to brand. It's called the, the can't come up with an idea invitational. That's what they should call it. So it was a six person. And uh, Shayna Baszler lose, loses all the time when she's champion. But then Natty and Tamina won the belt, and so now Shayna wins. And so she pinned Natty, and uh, they will be getting a rematch for the titles, a match we will have seen three times in two weeks coming up on Raw. So I hope you're all excited about that. Do we know how Reggie is? Uh, no, he's, he was burned. We had Shinsuke Nakamura versus King Corbin with uh, Rick Boogs. is now Shinsuke Nakamura's uh, guitar player. The act is awesome. I love every everything about it. It's just the greatest. Oh, I don't know if, if Boogs is going to do anything with him. He like he knows one uh, riff uh, in Nakamura's song, but only one. So it's, he just plays that one over and over again. But anyway, he uh, he had a match with King Corbin. 
Um, I was not going to argue with Dave. This match was boring. He said it was good. But, like, a Corbin match is you get the heat and you lay on the mat. That bores me. And then Nakamura made a quick comeback. They went, like, four minutes, and then uh, Nakamura won with a small package. One of those WWE things, hey, let's do a surprise finish three weeks ago with a small package, and then let's do it on every single show twice. So we got a lot of small packages lately. That's what they do. We had a Roman Reigns segment with uh, Jimmy Uso and everybody, and uh, long story short, the Usos are facing uh, the uh, Street Profits next week. Roman's not happy about that, that they're teaming up, but... Cesaro then comes back. Cesaro was beaten via submission, clean in the middle of the ring, with no interference and with zero help. Roman Reigns got zero help. Nobody came out. He just beat the guy dominantly in the middle of the ring. And Cesaro comes out and says, I would really like a rematch in Hell in a Cell. And I'm like, bro, I love you. No, you were ruined on the last show. In what universe would I want to see this match again? In a cell, mind you. So it ends up with him getting beat up by Seth Rollins. So I think they're going to do Seth Rollins and Cesaro, which I'm fine with, even though I don't know if you guys remember this or not, but we just saw that match like three weeks ago. They've been feuding forever. Now we're doing it again. But that's what they did. Dominic beat Robert Roode. Uh, This was the small package battle the last couple of weeks. He won again, but this time at least it was with the frog splash. Uh, it was nice to see the good guys win. I don't know what this means for the tag titles, but they, they beat Bobby Roode. And then finally, we had the main event, which was Apollo Crews, Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn, and Big E. For 21 minutes, my God, did these four guys have a great match. They had a great four-way. And then all of a sudden, you know at the beginning of the Firefly Funhouse where you see like the big blue sky and the clouds and they play the silly music? All of a sudden, Biggie is standing in the same clouds, and the announcers go, "Somebody turn the lights on!" Except they weren't off. He was just in the clouds, and then out comes Alistair Black, who gets in the ring, and he kicks Big E, and then uh, what's his face? Cruz gets the pin to retain the title. Twenty-one minutes I watched a match to get that finish. If you enjoy these videos, for just seven dollars and ninety-nine cents per month. You can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.